Kit. Welcome. Hello, Wynn. <laughs> Welcome to uh, this uh, interview, and we want to hear about your history at Grandview High School. You want to start with uh, when you moved here, maybe, and, uh, and how you entered school here in Grandview. Well, my parents moved intentionally to Grandview because my mother had gone to high school here. She started when she was 13, and her family had moved to Westwood. And our family, that is my father and a younger brother uh, and mom, had lived first on Northwest Boulevard on the corner of King. And then we moved to uh, Second, uh, let's see, no, we moved to Ashland Avenue, but above Third. So we knew that I couldn't be in Grandview Schools there. So uh -huh. for a year, my parents moved. Um, so I was ready for first grade when we lived on Second Avenue. And then this house came up for sale on Elmwood, which was back to back with my mother's house that she had moved to originally at age 13 with her parents. Wow. So that was wonderful. I had my grandparents all the time then, uh, right through the backyard, and we did a lot of things together. So I started Grandview uh, right here. And the, it was all the Thomas Edison block, and now my two grandchildren who live down the street from us, ages 11 and 13, are in the same buildings uh, that I went oh, all the way through school. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm so happy about that. So when you started school, you actually started kindergarten? They didn't have kindergarten okay, then. Okay. I had a little play school between age four and five in Upper Arlington with a woman named Bertie Pollen. And uh, somebody who became well known in Arlington anyway on the basketball team was also in that class, Doug Goodsell, uh, who also graduated in 1951, but from Arlington, and Joanna Lawyer, who graduated from Grandview a year ahead of me, was also in that kindergarten class, and I have a picture of that, so that's a happy memory, yeah, long, but not kindergarten. Uh, uh, such. But then you started first grade, mm -hmm. went through first grade, uh, did. all those early years, and, and went into, what is it, junior, junior high, high, right? middle school the, was uh, called. Yeah, the original part of the building now um, on Fairview uh, entrance anyway, that was the elementary school. And between that and the other half, which is on Oakland, there was a huge gymnasium where we learned to dance, ballroom dancing. <laughs> Now that, uh, of course, has been totally reconstructed and is a wonderful computer room uh, that my grandchildren have been able wow. to take advantage of. Now you learn ballroom dancing as a junior <laughs> high per, uh, no. or, or high school? No, we did that in elementary school. They wanted us to learn how to waltz and how to foxtrot. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it is amazing, yeah. <laughs> I loved Great. it. And of course, well, that was end, early learning. Early it? learning. I think yeah. that was fifth grade, fifth and sixth grade. And of course, we played intramural basketball in that gym also. Yeah. Uh, but the reason that they could accommodate uh, us in that one building, junior high on one side and the elementary all on the other, is because the children who lived, as we said, below the hill from Grandview Avenue South, but not quite Grandview, I think it was a little further. Uh, they went to Stevenson already, and then they joined us for the junior high, which was the other half of the building. And also, we were not all in one class at that time. Uh, we had different teachers for, for different subjects, and then, of course, we were all in the high school. But that was, uh, that was a little getting to know period, because those of us who had started here uh, at Thomas A. Edison, you know, had the little groups that we were people that we were really familiar with and the others were pretty much strangers because we hadn't played with them yet and so but it it didn't take any time it was but you joined each wonderful. other and yes. what would have been the seventh so and exactly eighth grade. seventh and eighth grades and that was in the junior high right. on the west side of that gymnasium 
Right. And actually, exactly. they were connected by that gene gymnasium. Yes, they were. Yeah. And now the whole school is different with the big addition and having right. taken that gym and making, right. you know, a whole other things. Just one little thing here about junior high, though. Yeah. Uh, Miss Ware was our civics teacher in the eighth grade. And I remember she wanted us to look at the newspapers every evening and bring in a particularly interesting story for us and tell the class about it. And it was at the time that uh, Chiang Kai-shek was moving from China over to Taiwan. So when we had, I think it was our 50th high school reunion, they, we were all asked to write just a little bio of what had happened in the intervening years, but also what we remembered most from school. And suddenly I remembered that because one of my daughter-in-laws is from Taiwan. So here back in eighth grade, I had picked this article about Chiang Kai-shek and Madam Chiang Kai-shek moving to Taiwan from the mainland. And then, of course, having no idea that that would play a part in my life later wow, on. Wow. So, and the children of this daughter-in-law and my first son, my oldest son, are the ones who are here in Grandview oh, now. And wonderful. And um, then, then we move on into your high school years. Mm -hmm. uh, by this time, uh, the transition between learning Stevenson uh, students had taken place in oh, your yeah. seventh and eighth grade. Mm -hmm. So that was a transition accomplished. accomplished. Do you feel like you got to know the people that were uh, also from the east end of Grandview and the west <laughs> right. end of Grandview uh, uh -huh. uh, better. And yes. so you went on to high school together right. in the ninth grade. Right. What do you remember about that transition? Because now you're moving to another building. That I was a little intimidated by the size of all the people who were the seniors, you know, and the juniors. and. We knew the names of the football players because we, by in junior high we were going to the rallies and, and uh, of course we knew all their names. And um, there was a Jack Boyer who lived just on the corner of Westwood and First Avenue. And there was a song, Hubba Hubba Hubba, Hello Jack. I don't know if you remember that. And we, if we were walking in a group up to say First Community Church on Saturday to practice the chorus line for uh, the talent show or something, we knew where his house was, and we'd stand there and sing that song in front of his house. I mean, right, we were junior hires, right? Yeah, yeah. So I guess that could be forgiven or understood <laughs> or something, but I'll never forget doing that. So, yeah, but the transition was just fine. I mean, we, it was like one class yeah. after they came up from Stevenson. Do you remember how many were in your class, well, a number attached to that? There were 87 who graduated. So, I, re I mean, there were a few people who left, but very few, you know, during those years, and just a few who came in uh, to Grandview and, and into our class. I mean, it was just a handful. Uh, so 87, I would say, is probably what we were then, too. Did, uh, tell about the subjects that, that you took. Did you have to sign up for a particular um, class that you wanted to take, or do you remember anything about the teachers and your experience of going into a different schedule? Yeah. Um, of course, there was a choice with mathematics when we were juniors and seniors. We did not have to go on with trigonometry or calculus, but I think all of us had to do um, algebra and then geometry. I loved geometry. He was one of my favorite teachers. And, and I, his name, you remember that? Yes, Ralph Drinkhouse. Wonderful person. I mean, just as a person, such a, a warm, understanding man. I don't think he ever had any trouble in the class, you know, because everybody respected him and enjoyed it so much that he never had any trouble with discipline. And the single day that still stands out in my mind and that I've tried to recreate for my all of my grandchildren um, is he showed us exactly 
why it is that earth has seasons and there was a sun and then he had he showed how the the earth is on its axis and as it goes around the sun of course the sun is going to hit either the northern part or the southern part you know below or above the creator i never forgot i mean it was just seared in my questioning mind yeah. well, how this was possible how could they prove that and I've tried to show my uh, grandchildren that with a flashlight and a globe yeah. so that they would never uh, think. So he, he really um, turned out to be your favorite teacher or and do you I, had others? Well, I had a number, but um, he made geography fun and I loved geography and I was good at it and we did, we were able to do designs, you know, then too. Yeah, and um, Mrs. Peck who taught English and uh, one thing that I've passed on for Mrs. Peck, I mean, that's not the outstanding thing because she taught us uh, uh, lots of, of early, Amer early literature, uh, was how to spell. She was uh, really strict on spelling and people were always spelling the word separate wrong. And she said, just remember a rat with a curly tail. So it would never be, you know, separate. <laughs> S-E-P-E-R, no, a rat with a curly tail. <laughs> so I've passed that on when I see somebody who spelled separate wrong. But anyway, we, Mrs. Peck came to, um, I think our 40th high school reunion also, and she and my mother were good friends because my uh, younger brother had her also. And um, she, was, she was a lovely, lovely person. And Mrs. Wolf was the French teacher. And Mr. Davis, taught biology and I just loved him because I had such a questioning mind I guess and I just wanted answers to a lot of things that were puzzling to me and he never hesitated to you know explain anything so sort of like Bill Nye you know with the book that I told you about yeah, yeah. that kind of person yeah so I really I liked I, there wasn't a teacher that I didn't like um, but you enjoyed were, school. I enjoyed you had a school. Good, I really good did. Experience I really did. With a grand view. I did. Yeah. Um, you mentioned working as editor of the yearbook. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about that experience and how how you enjoyed that. Uh, if you was that one of your favorite things yes. in school? Yes. Yes. Uh, I worked with uh, Al Lane, who was also a senior that year, and Al became a pilot for TWA. I last saw him at, I think it was the 50th reunion that we had a few years ago, and he's died since he got cancer, but uh, Al was a good partner. We, we uh, coordinated our work so that you know he would take responsibility for this and I'd do the other and it was fun working with the photographer choosing the pictures doing the layouts and uh, I went to Chicago uh, that senior year over Thanksgiving vacation for a yearbook editors conference and it was for high school yearbook editors which was fun and uh, got what some What year was good, that now? That would have been uh, 50. 50 because I graduated then in 51 okay. in June. And that was that yearbook would have been the 51 right. yearbook. Right, right. Um, but that was quite an adventure because it started snowing. I, I went by bus and to, uh, to Chicago, to Chicago. Uh -huh. and uh, starting out home the bus got stuck in a terrible storm and couldn't go any further. So they had to transfer us to a train. And uh, I don't know what time we got to Columbus, but meanwhile, I had had food poisoning. So I was suffering mightily on the bus and then on the train. And there was this nice man who saw that I just could hardly move. And he saw that I got home. Uh, it was <laughs> it was quite an end to what had been a wonderful weekend, <laughs> but uh, that was the first time I saw Chicago, and I was back there a year ago, and of course I didn't remember much of anything, but uh, 
it was it a was year good. ago. It was the first time back to Chicago. <laughs> right. Was it the food poisoning that <laughs> no, kept you away no, that long? No, I had no reason really to go. So um, right. Then right. last year I visited my first grade girlfriend. Oh. The one who lived oh. on to Oakland. Oh my god. I goodness. told you about. Um, mm -hmm. How do you compare what you feel your grandchildren are getting with Grandview Schools? I'm very happy for them. I'm extremely happy and I know my parents always said there wasn't a levy they would turn down because they felt so, so intense really about supporting this school system and to see the signs and, and to read the articles that Grandview is still at the top in terms of you know state ratings and all just makes my heart sing really i'm so happy for them and i'm glad that 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 all the extensions have been done i went to the cakewalk on friday and my 13 and a half year old grandson was playing the trombone and i'd never heard alan play and i called him today and he said yeah he had a good time and i'm hoping he'll go into the marching band i hope so uh, now, what grade is he in? He's in seventh grade. Okay. And, uh, and you're having talking a about great the Grandview time. Marching Band. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping he will. He hasn't had any interest, he said, yet, but he enjoyed playing. I saw him up there on the bleachers, and he was having a good time. And so, anyway, I've got my fingers crossed for that. Uh, but all the technology that the kids have, and that the, everybody will have a computer, whether you know their family could afford it or not, here, uh, that's all to the good. It's just, I'm so proud of this good. community, you know, for always voting on these levies to make it possible for these things to happen. Right, right, and have this library here. For well, now that's the best. That's the icing on the cake. When we came back to Grandview, it was uh, it was a real thrill. I mean, my mom was so active, and we didn't get back here until 2006, really. We moved in with her 2005 at Christmas time. And that was uh, on Elm Elmwood. Elmwood, yeah, yeah, the house I grew up in. Yeah, my parents were there for whew, well, from 1940 to. Mm, 2008, mom died, so I don't know, you do the math. <laughs> you, and you moved here uh, in 06. We moved here in 06, right. Uh, we moved here finally in 12, after we were able to sell our house in New Hampshire. And, uh, but in 08, my mother's 95th birthday, my oldest son and his family with his Taiwanese wife and the grandchildren came for mom's birthday. This is Helen Hively we're talking about. Yes, and, yes. And my son decided on the spot that he, it was time to move out of Istanbul after living and working there for 10 years, and he wanted the grandchildren to have time with their grandparents, even though we'd tried to visit them twice a year. And, um, and the house down the street came up for sale while he was talking. Sharon Harris across the street came over to visit mom on her 95th and Chris asked if there were any houses and she said oh tomorrow one down the street we went down the next day and looked at it and he bought it so that's why these two darling grandchildren are in Grandview schools and one reason he wanted to move here not just for the schools but for the Grandview library and he's probably say, say here. it out loud <laughs> <laughs> for the Grandview library he's here almost every day and just makes the most use of this. He brings books that I haven't seen yet and shows them to me and then I get to read them like Marco Polo's illustrated travel book uh, that I have at home that I haven't finished yet. So, so you yeah. would say between the high school, uh, I, the school system the schools, and the library. Yeah. It's a pretty unique Kid, it's been wonderful talking with you. Is there anything that you feel like you um, had left out that you wanted to tell us about that we didn't touch on? Can you think of anything? Well, I'm glad that my grandfather found Grandview. My mother's dad was a traveling salesman 
and at one time when he was here in Columbus, he had, I guess, uh, either somebody just drove him around the city or he had business here, and he saw Grandview, and he decided that was a nice place to put his family. So this would have been around 1926. And that's how mom and her parents and brothers moved to Grandview. And in that house that they bought on Westwood Avenue, my parents then bought the house that I grew up in, which was back to back with theirs. So it's been a long Grandview tradition. So your oh, Helen here. Hively was your mother. Yes. What was her maiden name? Motes, M-O-T-Z, Motes. Spell and it again. M-O-T-Z. Motes. Motes. Mm -hmm. Did your grandfather have a business on? Yes. Yes, Tell he started. He started uh, when the depression hit. And he had been working with Goodyear tires, and uh, that job uh, disappeared. And he had enough in ingenuity, I guess, and imagination to start a business making tire patches. And that was in the time when you had the balloon tire inside of the other tire, um, the inner tubes and that we always used to take on lakes or rivers and you know paddle around inner tubes anyway uh he wonderful. had a business and huh? he had a business to make patches for those inner tubes and i think they had patches also for the outer uh you know part of the of the tire also and my father then this uh, is pre-1930 was this in the 20s yes uh, the market crashed in 29, so, and my parents married in 32, uh, and dad went on the road with grandpa, I think, in 33 or 34. Uh-huh. So the business is called Speedy, Speedy Tires? Something like that. Speedy Patches? I don't know. Anyway, there's, there's going to be a picture in your... And he, he selected this business to be on First Avenue, your grandfather. Yeah, well, you know, people really tried to work close to home yeah. at that yeah. time. So, and uh, I guess uh, the building was available and is still there. It has gone through many transitions this is with other businesses. Just east of Oakland Avenue mm -hmm. on that mm -hmm. strip yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Where the alteration. <laughs> Yeah. lady is now. Helen Hively went to, uh, as Helen Motes, right. went to Grandview Schools, Yes. graduated. Yes. When did she graduate? In 1931. And you graduated in 1951. Mm -hmm. right. what, a, what a heritage. I know. What I'm so heritage. lucky. I'm so lucky. And then to thank you, how old are your grandchildren now? The ones who live here are 11 and 13, and they're just having a ball in Grandview Schools. What Very grades active. are they in? Yeah. Sophie's in five, grade five, uh -huh. and Alan's in grade seven in junior high. And they have loved their teachers. There hasn't been a teacher that they haven't liked. And my daughter, who has two grandchildren uh, also, and she's in Virginia, has been unhappy with her experiences for her children in their school she said yes i wish that they could have been in grandview so can't get them moved to grandview can no, you no they're <laughs> no they maybe don't. the house behind you on the other <laughs> side her husband's job is there yeah, and, thanks uh, a lot it's oh been, well been thank a pleasure you. talking with you for me too